أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والليل إذا يغشى والنهار إذا تجلى وما خلق الذكر والعنسى إن سعيكم لشتى فعما من أعطى واتقى وصدك بالحسنى فسنيسره لليسرى وعما من بخل واستغنى وكذب بالحسنى فسنيسره للعسرى وما يغني عنه ماله إذا تردى إن علينا للهدى وإن لنا للآخرة والعولى فعذرتكم نارا تلظى لا يسلها إلا الأشق الذي كذب وتولى وسيجنبها الأتق الذي يعطي ما له يتذكى وما لأحد عنده من نعمة تجزى إلا ابتغاء وجه ربه الأعلى ولا سوف يرضى آمنت بالله صدق الله صدق رسول الكريم ونحن على ذلك الشاهدين والشاهدين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد كلما ذكره الذاكرون صل على سيدنا محمد كلما غفل عن ذكره الغافلون وصل على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصل على سيدنا محمد في كل وقت وحين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ارحم أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم كرم أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم انصر لأمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم فرج عن أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي عمري وحل الأقضة من لسان يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما ربنا زدنا علما آمين ثم آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I hope um all of you are uh, doing well in your uh, lives and I pray to Allah to uh, protect you from every evil including evil eye and uh, make you stand on haq all the time and uh, make us all from the Ahl al-Quran and make us of those who uh, strive in the path of Allah who uh, strive in spreading the message of Quran so um, last time we started a new surah that is surah layl surah layl uh, we tried to uh, uh, understand its um, uh, period of revelation when it was revealed and what were the events around this surah and we tried to understand um, uh, what what actually is the theme of this surah and we try to understand um, at least first four ayahs of the surah so today we'll go ahead so what we studied earlier is um, i'll just have a recap of um, simple recap of all those ayahs allah says uh, idha yagsha. by the night allah takes oaths by the night when it spreads those who uh, did not attend the uh, uh, last session, uh, I request them to go back to the uh, YouTube uh, video so that they may understand why is Allah taking uh, these oaths and uh, what actually is the need of taking oaths in the surah. So there are many surahs, there are 114 surahs. Allah doesn't take oaths in all the surahs. There are specific surahs. Uh, mostly in um, 
Ampara, where Allah takes multiple oaths. And these oaths uh, follow with Jawab, Jawab al Qasam, the response. So I already mentioned uh, why Allah takes oaths and uh, what is the hikmah in uh, taking oaths. And after that, uh, what uh, what is Allah's response to those oaths? Right? So Allah is saying, by the night when it spreads. We had a very long discussion about these uh, these four ayahs. Um, like, uh, why 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 uh, Allah used why why did Allah take oath of life? Why is the word yaksha? Right? And the day when it shines forth, when it brightens. And him and he who created the male and the female, Unsa, Muzakar and Monas, right? Muzakar and Unsa. And then in Sa'ayakum la Shatta. And then, in fact, the reality is undoubtedly your efforts are diverse, your efforts are different, uh, your efforts are on different ends. So, uh, last time we discussed this ayah in a very comprehensive way and today we'll go ahead inshallah so allah says um man when allah says that your um, efforts are different they are diverse so allah makes mention of two guys allah makes mention of two characters right and he gives examples he gives the qualities of both the characters he gives qualities of both the individuals and uh, allah mentions their result also what allah gives them to their efforts right so today we'll go ahead inshallah ayah number five allah says man a'ata wattaqa. Man a'ata then as for the one as for him as for her, who gives and fares. As for the one, Allah makes mention of fa. Fa uh, is actually used, to, it is uh, its closest. And Allah stresses upon certain things when he uses fa. As for the one, who gives and who fears, who is scared. What taqa? So what does it mean actually? Allah said, A'ata. A'ata means actually give in much abundance. Give in much abundance. Right? Allah said, A'ata in Surah Kawthar also. Inna a'atayna kal kawthar. What does Allah say there? Surely, we have given, we have a'ata, we have given. Inna a'atayna kal kawthar. We have given you abundance kawthar. So, uh, for this, uh, there are certain words in the Quran which are used, uh, like which are synonyms actually. So, for example, nahalla, hadiyya, wahabba. Like uh, in response to, for example, when someone gives, so there are certain words. These nahalla, adiyya, wahabba, dafa, rafada, afaba, diya, adaa. But this type of giving is to give something in response to something. So, for example, um, uh, you might see something and you like it. So, as a reaction, you give them. Giving something as a favor as a bonus far beyond what was expected right so uh, what did we give we gave we gave our wealth we gave our time right we gave our wealth whatever we had so uh, when we when we talk about donation when we talk about this atha in, in Urdu, we say Ata, yeah, Atiya, 
Atiya means donation. When we donate something, we start with what? We start with our money. We start with our pocket. Atiya. Right? So what do we do? If it is sincere, if it is for the sake of Allah, we give it to poor people, we give it to orphans, we give it to our neighbors who are in need, we give it to those who are in need, they are needy, we give it to those who are Ibn Sabil, who are the son of sons of the way, sons of the path. So it's literal translation is this, like for travelers. Right? So we give our wealth, we give our money to the cause of Allah. Right? This is the first characteristic of the effort which Allah has used in Nasa'ayakum Lashatta. Indeed, your efforts are different. So, this is the one type of effort. So, as for the one who gives, and then who fares. Is taqa. It means save yourself from harm and the consequences of. Allah, Allah also used the, this word to guard against. Guard against what? Fattakun nar. In um, Surah Baqarah, Allah says, Fattakun nar allati waquduhan nasu wal hijarah u'iddat lil kafirin. So guard yourself against the fire. Fire number 24. So, attaqa means Taqwa, guarding yourself against what you fear. That's khawf. Khawf is, khawf means fear. That is, you hear a loud sound and you are scared. But to hide when scared is an act of taqwa. Because you guarded yourself. So, taqwa is an action of guarding due to fear of being harmed. So, uh, uh, when we when we go back to the uh, linguist linguists and when we go deep into this word uh, taqwa so we get viqaya viqaya literally means to protect yourself to protect someone right so allah says he gave a'ta he gave and then he had fair to protect himself what taqwa right so the one who gives so, for example, when we give when we give some donation, what do we think? We feel, oh wow, we have done a lot of things. So done. I am a guaranteed jannati, right? I am a guaranteed person from Jannah, so I don't need to do something else. So it's done. The deal is done already. So now I don't have to look back. It's done. But usually, what happens is the one who gives usually feels confident about himself and his charity. Right? But in this ayah, Allah is telling us that this person has fair even after the giving. Even after he gave charity, he gave zakat, he still has fair. He is still scared. So, um, when uh, Ibrahim والسلام, and Ismail والسلام, were uh, erecting the foundations of Kaaba, so, what would they do? They would say, "Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samiul alim, wa tuba alina inna kanta tawab al rahim." Rabbana inna kanta samiul alim. Yeah, yeah, Allah, O oh our Lord, you are the most listening. You listen. Rabbana inna kanta sami. Rabbana inna kanta sami. وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا Sorry. He, they would say رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ عَنْتَ السَّمِي الْعَلِيمِ Ya Allah, you accept it from us. Please, please accept it from us. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ عَنْتَ السَّمِي الْعَلِيمِ You are the most hearer, you are the most listener and you have the knowledge of everything. You are the alim. وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ عَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمِ وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا and accept our repentance. You see, they are erecting the foundations of Kaaba and they are, uh, they are repenting. They are repenting before Allah. For what? Did they commit any sin? Did they do something wrong? But still, 
and now what what our approach uh, these days is when we do something good then we yeah, when we think okay it's done we are confirmed jannati now i don't have to do anything i'm done no we have to strive we have to have the approach of uh, ibrahim alayhi salatu salam and ismail alayhi salatu salam after doing the best ever job in the world they are saying rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samil alim wa tub alaina innaka antat tawwabur rahim please accept our repentance because you are the most acceptor of the repentance and you are the rahim they are saying father and son are saying the most uh, the most brilliant the most pure father and son on the face of the earth they are saying that so there is a mistake which happens in a lot of deviant religions and also some muslims are bringing this into islam these people are involved in earning haram and lawful money so they give a lot of money in charity to recompense for this evil but they do not stop their unlawful earning on one side they get, uh, they uh, they earn from haram uh, sources they earn haram and uh, on the other side they give in charity so you tell me will allah accept it i don't think so. i don't think so because allah wants this charity to be from the pure source this charity will be accepted if it comes from the pure source if you have a lawful earning if you have a halal earning but if it is from haram earning if it is from unlawful sources then even if you give whole amount in charity then i don't think it will be accepted it will not be accepted because allah loves purity allah accepts purity right so uh, so by this aya what we understand is you have to have both what does the what are the two things what is what does that mean you have to have both you have to have the attitude of giving and you have to have the attitude of fair right you should give from the lawful sources from the halal sources and you should fair after that whether allah will accept me uh, when when uh, our predecessors when our aslaf would give something they would be crying ya allah please accept it if they would give something in charity if they would do something in something some good deed they would ask allah to they would beg allah to accept it they would uh, offer namaz for it ya allah please accept it and now you have seen if we give 10 rupees to any needy person when we feel oh i'm on the sky i have done a lot of good deed but that's not the case we have to have the approach of our predecessors so we have to have these two things giving and fair right imam um uh, i mean uh, maulana amin ahsan islahi sahib rahimahullah says that uh, this is not the only place in the quran wherein this sequence of giving and fair is mentioned in in surah uh, insan in surah tahar allah says uh, we feed you for allah's face inna ma yut'imukum liwajhi allah la nuridu minkum jaza'an wala shukura we do not want any reward or thanks we don't need it because we did it for allah inna ma nut'imukum liwajhi allah we did it for the allah's face allah's wajh inna nakhafu min rabbina yawman abusan qamtarira we fear from our master a day which will make the faces from so that's in surah dahar so there giving for allah's face is mentioned there and also in this surah when associated with giving it will uh, we will have that in uh, i number 920 inshallah right so uh, imam imam shaukani rahimahullah says that 
uh, this person according as per this person that's another ayah he kept exhausting his wealth for good causes he uh, like, uh, that means diversifying all your money for all types of different good causes some people do this in this life they invest their money in different projects in businesses which are not going well Hoping that, like, they hope that their business will grow and they will get a reward and profits out of it. So, now imagine you are doing it for the sake of Allah. You're doing it for the sake of Allah. How much reward you will get? You just, you just imagine. A person who is striving is doing all his day and night so as to gain uh, uh, so as to gain profits so as to gain rewards in this world but imagine that person who is doing it for the sake of allah so how how a rewardable act it will be you just imagine so uh Allah says he gave because he was afraid of being cheap and misery in the sight of Allah. Right? Are you, uh, am I audible? This. Uh, am I audible? Can anybody write in the chat box? Am I audible? Yeah, something happened with this. I'm sorry. Okay, all right. Um, what what was I saying? Can you tell me what was I saying? I was talking about this. Um. So, uh, what was I saying? No, uh, am I audible now? No? How is it now? Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, all right. So, um, I was I was saying that uh, this person he gave and he was afraid. He was afraid of being cheap and miserly in the sight of Allah. So that's why there came Fa'amam and Aata. Aata came first and fair came after that. Right? So uh, uh, there there has there's an example uh, of uh, the fundamental thing. That is um, is it is it really our money that we are giving that we are spending in the side in the way of Allah? Is it really our money? 
Is it really our money? Can somebody answer me? Is it really our money? Please write in the chat box. Is it really our, our money that we are spending? Oh, sometimes we brag about it. Oh, I gave 5,000 for the zakah. I gave 50,000 in zakah. So is it our money? So we earn it. And at the end of the month, we may get profit or we may get salary. So despite that, is it our money that we are spending? Whose money is this? Can you write in the chat box? Okay, we are the source. It's given by Allah. All right. Anybody else? If you want, you can unmute yourself. Shabash. Okay, is it is it our money that we are spending? Okay, there's there's a scholar who has uh, simplified it, who has given this example. He said, um, he said, uh, is it really our money that we are giving, or did Allah give it to us in the first place? So. He has given an example. Try getting a sweet and see if your children ask for it. When you give it to them, ask for, uh, ask them to give it back. What will the child say? The child will say it is mine. He or she will say it's mine. You, you don't have any authority. It's mine now. It's gone. Done. So, this is exactly how we humans act, how, how we act as humans with Allah. We forget that He is the one who gave it to us. He is the one who, who is providing this thing, this blessing to us. So, we are greedy like that child. We claim it belongs to us alone. Fundamentally, even we don't own this body. Even I don't own these eyes, these teeth, these uh, arms, these hands, these legs. Even we don't own this body. And now we are claiming that it's our body, whatever, like I'll do whatever I want. And it's our money. I'll spend it in the way I like. So it's actually an amana from Allah. It's actually a trust from Allah. So that Allah will see how you are going to use this life. How you are going to use this money which He has given to us. Allah says, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبُلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا I have created death. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ We have created death and life. For what? So that I'll see who will do better, who will do best, who will perform good in this world. Right? So, money is the uh, essential thing which makes you think you are in charge. You think uh, you own this money. But here in this ayah, Allah is exposing that attitude. Ata wa taqa. He gave and he, he feared that he might get an attitude that this is his money only. He might get that attitude. She might get that attitude. Oh, it's mine. It's my jewelry. It's my silver. It's my diamond. It's my silk. It belongs to me only. I don't give it in the way of Allah. I not. So this person, he or she feared that he might get an, he or she might get an attitude that this is her money. This is, this is her money only. So here, uh, you, uh, technically, you only give a lot of money when there's a deal, when there's a sure deal, when you're sure of a deal. If you are in doubt about a reward, you don't invest a lot of money into that. Right? When you feel that, no. 
this business will give me something good then you only then only you invest otherwise you keep yourself away from that from that business so the uh, thing is the stronger you are in your trust in allah the more you will give and the more you give the stronger your iman increases on the other hand the weaker your trust in allah the less you give because you don't have any trust you you feel that oh my my account uh, like uh, got decreased my account got decreased with this so uh, for example if i take out some 1000 rupees you will check i'll check oh 1000 rupees gone 2000 rupees gone 5000 rupees gone my god so but if you have iman you will say that this is going into the di divine bank of allah i'll get the fruits of this investment in jannah in the akhirah inshallah that should be our approach that should be our attitude but nowadays we don't have that attitude. we have to develop that attitude so if you are guaranteed a reward through a certain investment don't you invest a lot of your money? Obviously, yes. Because there's already a reward which is being guaranteed. It is a sure deal. So this person gives a lot in charity because he fears he might get a personality of being greedy and stingy. So after that, he may not give. Right? So... You would imagine that this uh, sequence would be at taqa wa wa'ata. Wa'ata. At taqa wa'ata. But here Allah says a'ata wa taqa. So if we take that sequence at taqa wa'ata, here it is different. So he gave, then he failed. It is the opposite to show the above amazing explanations of the emotions of this humanitarian giver. This person is a humanitarian giver. So it is his attitude. Right? So uh, after that, Allah says, husna." So what, what happened after that? He he gave uh, something in charity. He gave his money in charity a lot. Then what happened? He failed. After that, Allah says, Ayah number um, six. Ayah number six, Allah says, وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى And believed in the best. And believed in the best. And he confirmed the truth in the ultimate good. So the correct translation is, and he confirmed the truth in the ultimate good. Right? So, uh, this here, uh, uh, here uh, it implies ultimate. Husna means ultimate, best possible. So Allah talks about these qualities of these two individuals. Right now we are going through the qualities of first individual. What does he do? So he gives and he pairs. Third, he confirms the truth, the ultimate truth in the ultimate good. Right? He confirmed the truth in the best ultimate what? Allah does not say that. He's implying. Allah is implying. So it means... He confirmed the truth in the best. What is best? That is guidance. That is way of life. That is religion. That is obedience to Allah. Itaat. And his Rasulullah. And Jannah. Right? So that's the best. Best is guidance. Way of life. Religion. Obedience to Allah. And is Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Jannah. So Allah has summarized all the religion in one word that is Al Husna. Wasadda bil Husna. 
you see the language of Quran. So um, some uh, scholars would say that uh, they, they would say al husna means it is kalimatan kalimatan means two kalimatan they say that uh, husna means kalimatan first is la ilaha illallah that's first second muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu they are two kalimas they are, this is kalimatan two kalimas so they said al husna means la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu and they say that it is paradise. Paradise is the ultimate good. Husna. And um, they also say that uh, Husna means it is actually the following of messenger. Following of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you follow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is ultimate good. That is Husna. And fourth, they say that it means uh, giving the power. Giving to the poor. It is Al Husna. So here Allah keeps it open. So Allah wants us to think that's why He misses, He, uh, he uh, doesn't uh, use any particular word to fill in the gaps. Allah is actually teaching us. A person who knows something is good, but he doesn't do it, that's a, that's a pathological. If someone knows what is good and doesn't do it, that's pathological. So when Allah teaches us, this is the good, this is the ultimate good, then we have to do it because we got, we got the knowledge. If after getting the knowledge, we don't do it, then Allah will hold us accountable on the day of judgment. Allah will ask us, why didn't you act upon it when you knew? When you knew reciting Quran is an obligatory act for a person, for a Muslim, why didn't you recite it? Why didn't you spread to others? Why didn't you do its tabligh? Why didn't you teach it? Why didn't you, why didn't you learn it? Why didn't you memorize it? When you knew, it is the most important work for a Muslim. So then, we should have an answer. So I should have an answer. When we talk about this word Saddaqa, Saddaqa comes from Tasdeeq. Tasdeeq means to know something is good and to do it. Saddaqa bil husna. To know something is good and after that doing it, performing it, acting upon it. So, uh, uh, if, we, if we look at the um, fundamental theme of the surah, it comes, there are three things. First is, give your wealth in charity. Give zakah, give charity. Give your money to people who are in need. And second is taqwa, have fear of Allah. Take precautions, guard yourself. And third is, confirming the ultimate good. Wasaddaka bil husna. Right? So, uh, the central theme of the surah is A'ata, Wattaqa, Saddaqa. Three things. A'ata, Wattaqa, Saddaqa. That's action. All the three come into action. A'ata means uh, giving. It is the closest to action. Then taqwa is safeguarding against evil. And then Saddaqa, confirming the, uh, this truth. Right? So the closest word to sa'yukum when we talk about this in the sa'yukum lashatta. Right? So it is a'ata. It is action. First, uh, this, uh, this first you have to give charity. Then you should have taqwa. And then you have to do sadaqa. You have to have belief in the heart. Right? So uh, uh Imam uh, Shawqani Rahimahullah says, uh, like uh, in this in this ayah, he says that he confirms the truth means was bil husna means he gave the right of Allah, which he recognized was binding upon him. Allah gives you wealth, 
so you recognize that you should spend it in in his cause not in your business not in any any other thing so th there's no problem there's no problem like uh, you uh, you can't use that money into your business or something else but um, okay all right somebody had to leave so uh, he says that um, allah gives you wealth and you recognize that you should spend it in his cause there's nothing wrong in spending it in halal way it it can be your business it can be eating it can be spending on your family spending on your family is charity but if you keep on spending uh, extravagantly in a spendthrift manner in an exaggerated manner then it may go into israf it may go into exaggeration it may go into israf that's not acceptable so the best is when you use your money in the way of allah that's best so that is actually the you are depositing it in the bank of allah you are keeping that money in the bank of allah so allah is saying you give it to me i'll save it and on the on the day of judgment i'll show it to you this is your earning some scholars would say that if you aim for jannah what is your currency there what is your uh, what is your uh, this uh, you have to have money there you have to have some uh, uh, some money to spend what is your money that is this charity that is zakat so if you have enough charity then you may be able to spend there if you don't have charity then how will you spend here what we do is we get money from the bank and then spend because we know our money is deposited in the bank this is world but when this when we will die from this world will we take our money from the banks even if we take our money will that be useful no that will not be useful at all what will we do our our wah will be with allah our our wah that's ruh our ruh will be taken uh, by uh, these angels what will we do with that money even if it is in the our graves we can't do anything after that after death we can't do anything so before death we can make investments in the account of akhirah so we should start from today right we should start this attitude from today we don't have to be miser because this money comes from allah it's not our money if he is giving he is giving us so that he will see how i am spending this money from him how i am spending this money which he has given now we have to decide what are we going to do right so uh, the first words of this aya uh, uh, were amma man as for the one if he does this gives in charity and pays and confirms the truth this is called talimat ash-shart a conditional statement if he does this all that was mentioned like in the in the previous ayas fa'amma man ata wa taqa wa saddaqa bil husna then allah says fasanu yassiruhu lil yusra fasanu yassiruhu lil yusra this is an interesting aya Allah says, "Then we will ease him towards the ease. We will soon make smooth for him the path of ease, for him the path of goodness. Person Yasiruhu lil Yusra. We'll make ease for him. So until Allah makes something easy, it's not. Easy. Do you think that uh, your eating is easy, your drinking is easy?" you're working in the hospital is easy you're working in your office is easy you're uh, working for your business is easy no it's not easy unless and until allah makes that easy right uh, the word the word yusra is the feminine form of aisar aisar means the easiest 
Allah is saying, I'll make the easiest really easy for him. Here, Allah is giving a, a gift. He makes doing good deeds easy for him. So, Allah makes it hard for him to do evil deeds. Evil sins are hard for him to do. But here, when Allah says, But doing good deeds, Allah has made that easy for him or her due to him showing his sincerity to Allah in those things. Because this person gave in the charity, in the path of Allah, and then they fared. They had a fear of Allah. They guarded themselves. And then, what did, what did they do? They confirmed the truth in the ultimate good. Right? So, after that, Allah makes doing good things, performing good deeds easy for them. It's very easy. Like, uh, you, you just, you just, uh, you just uh, do it. You just follow these ayahs and then you will see you will have a lot of things to do which are good. Allah will pay ways. Allah will make make ways to do good. You will, you will say, how come Allah is giving me these ways? How come Allah is giving me uh, the opportunity to do good? So it's because if you are doing these, these three things, then Allah will open the ways for the good right so allah will open the ways for performing good deeds allah will make your attitude for the better so you enjoy and find it easier to do good deeds and after that you will not have any grudge you will not say no 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 i i i should spend very less in the path of allah no no, no. you will say yes i i will offer more namaz i'll recite more quran I'll help many people in the chat, many people who are in need. Because Allah put that in your heart and mind. Because you have already done that. You have already done that. Right? So, uh, in, in uh, Surah Ala, before the Surah, Allah says, uh, Allah tells Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, I'll make the easiest thing easy for you. So, but here Allah says, Then soon we'll make easy for him the way of ease because of that person. Right? So here, if we if we make these uh, things um, like if we compare these things, and the difference is that Allah said to Rasulullah, I'll make easy for you. In this surah, Allah said to the righteous character that soon I'll make easy for you. I'll make things easy for you. He did not say this to Rasulullah because Rasulullah is already content, is already happy with the decree of Allah. He is not at unrest with uh, his Lord. The people who are not messengers are not tranquil. They are sometimes even in a state of sin, sometimes like uh, uh, with bad company. But if they persist in doing good, Allah will soon make the path of ease easy for them. Right? So, uh, so uh, Rasulullah says in one hadith, E'malu fakulu muyussaru lima khuliqahu Work, that's work in good deeds because everyone has made easy for them what they have been created for. So it means do good deeds because whatever has been written for you in your destiny will be made easy for you. So uh, we ask uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make uh, doing uh, good things easy for all of us and uh, make us do 
many many good things many many good deeds uh, and make us uh, uh, give our wealth in charity give his money in charity and then uh, and uh, grant us taqwa and uh, develop develop taqwa in ourselves and then we uh, confirm the truth and ultimate good so may allah bring us uh, bring in us these uh, best qualities so that allah will make easy for us fasan yasiru lil yusra allah will make easy for us doing the good deeds so uh, i'll stop here so if you have any questions for uh, today's dars let me is you can use your mic you can use chat box also then inshallah i will um, continue these uh, ayas in uh, next and inshallah so if you have any questions please go ahead subhanakallah alhamdulillah nashadu la ilaha illa